These are in listen only mode. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Magic Bricks webinar series. Our endeavor to trigger a buy and bring back consumer confidence in the real estate market. We have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give, give you all a crisp insight of real estate industry. The topic of today's session is, should you go for subvention schemes in today's market? Uh, our guest speaker today is uh, Mr. Vinit Jain. He is the CEO and the founder of LoanStreet.in. He is at the forefront of strategy fund raising and digital marketing for the company. Uh, Vinit has been in senior leadership positions, helming sales distribution in top institutions in the banking sector. He carries a rich experience of process management, leading high performance team and setting up new business geographies, managing re uh, retail distribution channels and customer centric businesses has given him the ideal blend of uh, acumen and expertise to lead a customer focused distribution network such as Lone Street. Prior to this venture, Vineet was his zonal head for home loans at Bajaj fin Finserv uh, and led the portfolio for Western and Central India. He was working uh, across multiple geographies and a varied distribution platform. He was also associated with other renowned brands like HSBC, ICICI Rally Gear, and GE in sales and marketing roles. Vineet has, been a, Vineet has an MBA from Goa Institute of Management and Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering for, from Bela Institute of Technology. I also welcome uh, E. Jayshree Kuroop. She is the head of content and advisory department in Magic Bricks. She has been a business journalist for over two decades with the Times of India, the Economic Times and the Financial Express. She forayed into research in 2002. She is a regular guest columnist with a number of established media including the Times Group and others. Uh, we'll, start with the, uh, we'll start the session with a presentation. Over to you Jayshree. Uh, thank you, Neha. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Magic Bricks webinar series. Uh, as Neha said, we find that there are many, many um, reasons why the consumer today is keeping away from active buying. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that there's not enough information in the market. Magic Bricks has always felt that the more uh, we enable you with information and tools so that you can make your right choice, that uh, faster you will be able to uh, make your decision and buy your property. Today, uh, we've brought Vineet Jen, a person who will be able to actually deconstruct all the uh, various ads that you see in the market where it says pay a little bit now and uh, wait till possession. Uh, we, we get a lot of calls from our consumers asking whether this is a good scheme for them and what is the flip side? Is there a downside at all? And Vineet is the right man to answer your questions. Over to you Vineet. Uh, thanks Jayashree. Thanks Neha. Uh, thanks. Thank you for the uh, fine introduction. Uh, Vineet, we have an echo coming in. Do you have two, uh, two uh, instruments there? You'll have to shut down one because there's an echo coming. Uh, just, hold just hold on. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, we still have an echo, which was not there earlier. Uh, now? No. There is still an echo. Is there another system that is somewhere near you which is picking up your voice? Uh, trying to figure out, huh? just give me a second. Yeah. Now it's all right. We can hear you now. Fine. Fine now? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, sorry Please. about that. Sorry everybody, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, it was my mobile phone which was the culprit. So okay. thankfully I'm away from it now. Uh, thanks Jayashree, thanks Neha. Uh, as you said, there is a lot of uh, information which is needed to take the right decision by anybody who is doing home buying. And we read a lot of big adverts in newspapers nowadays which state, you know, this is a 575 uh, 20 kind of scheme which is which is going to give you a freedom from all EMIs to be paid till you get the possession of the flat. So a lot of builders are, are advertising this and using it to fuel demand 
uh, in real estate, which is uh, which is quite a, you know innovative way to instigate people towards home buying and also keeps them safe from a lot of things. So during the course of next five ten minutes, let me try to deconstruct and explain as much around these subvention schemes as possible, so that any interested home buyer can take an informed decision towards any of these schemes. Uh, so, 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 so subvention has three major uh, people involved in the process. Obviously the customer or the home buyer, uh, the developer who is selling the property and the guy who is in between which is the lending institution which is funding the buy of that particular property. Uh, so, so the way it works, the way it works is is that uh, the buyer just has to pay, say, five to thirty percent money upfront. So, to simplify, if a property is worth two crore rupees, the initial investment required from the buyer's end is just ten lakhs of rupees, and there are no EMIs to be paid till after possession. So, so the entire uh, onus of you know, construction in time is on developer because what happens is the developer is still getting money disbursed on behalf of the customer by the lender. So the way it works is that the buyer makes an application for that loan amount for that particular property to the lender, pays his or her own contribution of 5, 10, 15 percent as per the scheme applicable and remaining 65 to 70 percent is disbursed by the lender directly to the developer either upfront in a single shot or much rather as per the progress of construction. So it is actually the buyer who is paying money to the builder but not getting involved anywhere in the process because he is not being levied any interest or EMI till the possession. So the buyer, the buyer is safe from paying any EMIs. So uh, the developer gets access to the same funds through a direct disbursement from the lender. So what is happening if money is exchanging hands from the lender to the developer and the buyer is not paying the EMIs, then who is paying the EMIs? So the interest on this money is being borne directly by the developer. So the so that is how the developer wants to get to a possession stage ASAP so that he gets out of this interest payment, gets the remaining money which is uh, due to him and the buyer starts paying the EMI. So this is how the entire subvention process is working. It is a win-win situation for all the three parties because uh, the lender, lending institution gets higher credit off tape and their portfolio size is increasing. They also are able to uh, get more customers because paying 5 lakhs of rupees towards a property is much easier than having to pay 5 lakhs of rupees and paying EMI also. So the propensity of buying of that particular property increases. Also they have exclusive tie-ups possible with a lot of developers. So a developer might say that I am running a subvention scheme with an ICIC a bank. So most of the customers who go and buy a property through any marketing efforts of the developer in that project are li likely to go ahead and take a loan from the uh, bank which is ICIC. So it's a win-win situation for everyone, the buyer, lending institution and the developer. Uh, again, I'll again you know, explain what are the benefits to, devel to the developers. They have an enhanced cash flow available in terms of money being available to them as number of buyers or number of units sold has increased and each unit is going to give regular disbursement as and when the construction progresses. They also have an incentive to complete the project on time. As I said, it is they who are paying interest towards the disbursement of money. So the onus is on them to complete the project ASAP so that they get their, you know, uh, get out of this interest repayment and realize the complete money. They also get a lower rate of interest uh, because 
if they go and if they, if, a, if a developer wants to go and build a project they have to raise money through a lending institution there are two routes to do it one they can do go to a private lender which is again a very high cost uh, secondly they can go for a construction finance or a project finance loan from one of these lenders maybe ICS bank only who is going to give the loan to them at an average IRR of 16 to 18 percent Instead of that, when a customer is applying for a loan to ICICI, the same money is given through a subvention scheme to the same developer by the same lender at maybe eight, uh, sorry, nine, nine and a half percent, which is the current home loan rate. So the interest cost of the uh, builder comes down from a 16, 17 percent to nine and a half percent straight. Also, in, in construction finance, there are a lot of caveats or parameters available which have to be fulfilled dependent on which further uh, inflow of funds on the lender will come. The risk of meeting those parameters is higher as compared to this scenario in which the project has already been underwritten by uh, the lender and of risk assessment of buyer has also been done by the lender and regular cash flows are going to happen. So they enjoy a fairly low rate of interest and their propensity to you know, kind of uh, complete the project on time is very high, which overall leads to a credibility build for the customer, for the, for the developer, because uh, they have some lender who is already backing their uh, project. So overall win-win situation uh, for a lot of people. It also kind of creates a deferred payment plan for developer because the money is coming in, tranche, in tranches and the repayment of that uh, money is, is given in the form of a deferred payment plan. Maybe there's a two, two year moratorium till the project gets completed. There are various ways in which the lender can accommodate uh, lesser cash flows of the developer. So overall I feel it gives an enhanced cash flow, very good credibility and access to and an access to a lot of buyers using the, the subvention scheme. Uh, the benefits to buyer uh, are as I, as I said there's a zero liability on any interest or EMI, EMI till the date of possession or a pre-declared period say two to three years if in, if in any particular project the developer is pre-declaring. So the customers who are buying the property can plan their cash flows accordingly. Look for next three years, my life is sorted out. I do not have to pay any interest or EMI towards the loan which I have raised and I have already got a property which I am going to get after three, four years. So there's a lot of peace of mind available for the customer. There's elimination of uh, delivery risk because as I said the onus of the delivery is on the builder also because the builder is paying interest till the delivery happens. So it's very clear that the builder is going to be uh, pretty fast in delivering the product to get out of the interest payment cycle. There's also quality assurance because the lender has already underwritten the developer and the project and basis that only they extended the scheme to a particular project or developer, whatever the case be. Uh, this is very beneficial for the, the new age you know, couples in India who are living in a rented flat and are going for under construction property because uh, to manage both the rent as well as an EMI on the property becomes too much for, for people nowadays. So I feel a lot of disposable income gets lost if they have to pay EMI along with the rent. So it's very, very suitable for the you know, new age uh, guys uh, who, are, who are the actual home buyers in today's date because they do not have any EMI burden on them. Again, you know, arranging 5 to 6 lakhs of rupees or 10 lakhs of rupees for uh, the initial own contribution in the flat is much easier than, you know, say you're buying when you're paying 20% of the money up front the two crores property will will require 40 lakhs of own contribution in your mind, in your pocket whereas a you know 5 25 75 kind of scheme will will ensure that you only need to pay 5 to 10 lakhs of rupees so i think that you know it's very very suitable for people who 
who see their career growing fast in the future and have low cash flows right now but high potential for increased cash flows later on. So overall it is a very beneficial solution to home buyers. But uh, nothing comes free with great rewards come great risks. So certainly there are some risks associated for a home buyer in a subvention scheme property. Uh, so I, I list, I've listed down the top five things which can go wrong. So if, if for example, if a, if a developer uh, defaults or does a late payment of EMI or the payments as per the payment cycle which has been set by the lender, it can affect the buyer's credit score. The risk of that happening is very low because all uh, measures are already put in place by the lender before extending such a subvention scheme to a project to, or to a developer. But still, even if it's a 0.01% risk, it is very pertinent to keep in mind the fact that tomorrow there is a 0.01% risk of your credit score getting affected. Uh, secondly, if there is a delay in payment on the developer side, there could be a burden of both EMI and rent coming onto the customer. Uh, as per the, real estate, the new real estate bill, uh, people are largely protected from such things. But as I said, the risk could be very, very minimal, but it stands that uh, if the developer delays the project even by three, six, seven months, whatever, it is still going to cause that EMI to come on to you. Uh, again, in, in case of you know delayed possession, the property price uh, might be higher, so the builder builder can can again there's a very very low risk, but the builder can ask for a higher property price. You know, look man, the property prices have increased, so there's a there's a little gray area there. There's a two to three percent risk of that scenario happening. Uh, I have seen during the course of my career that many times builders raise money in a project and use it to fund or launch the next project. So that is also a possibility. Again, it will be cross-checked or, or the control buttons will still be with the lender, but no matter how, how uh, small the risk is, but the risk is there that developers getting access to money can use the money and divert it to some other project which can use to you know some kind of expected delays and then gets into a, into a different cycle. Um, again if developer defaults which is very very unlikely I must say but then again you know both EMI and rent could could become a burden onto the buyer's, buyer's kind of wallet right. Uh, so, so overall we, uh, we at Loan Street uh, do a lot of home loans and we do Nowadays, a lot of subvention scheme uh, driven uh, funding. So customers are, have a high propensity of buying uh, under these schemes. So if, if for a perspective, if a buyer, if, 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 a prop, if there are two developers in the same vicinity, one has a subvention scheme running, the offtake of properties will be at least 5x as compared to a guy who does not run a subvention scheme. All right? and, uh, lenders are very selective, they do not offer a subvention scheme to anybody and everybody. But still we feel that you know uh, before taking an individual decision, uh, a buyer should do as much research as possible on what is the project all about, what is in the vicinity, you should actually go and visit the project once, see what is there nearby, what is the future plan of you know things happening over there, do an analysis of the lender also see how good on customer service or you know post disbursement process or hand holding approach does a lender has because you're taking a decision wherein you're buying a property and you're investing a lot of your money effort your salaries into a particular house so you should measure the lender also as to how are the service standards of the lender if need be you take you go to an online platform like Loan Street or you go to Magic Bricks and do a project analysis, do a developer analysis, see what are their past projects, see what is the rating Magic Bricks has given a particular developer or how well Magic Bricks is rating this particular project in question from a property perspective. You can come to loanstreet.in and see 
you know how is what is the lender offering what kind of rates the lender of lender is offering you can do a lot of research on loan state or google or otherwise on the lender so overall i think it's a win win situation for everybody having said that everything should be taken with a pinch of salt so i feel that buyers should do their own analysis and research before jumping on to such a proposition uh, that's it from my side guys thank you thanks vinith that was very interesting there are a couple of things that i would like to ask on behalf of our consumers the first thing yeah. is you said uh, the consumer should do the research uh, if i could ask you a couple of questions there uh, yeah. when you're researching about a, a lender and researching about a developer what, what are the four things you should keep in mind uh, as a consumer right so, so from, from a lender's perspective you should see that although a first thing you should see is how much loan you are eligible for uh, at that particular lender so suppose there is a project called abc trinity which is being funded by an x bank so an x bank might be funding that project but when you apply for that project to that lender their eligibility parameters might not make you eligible for that amount of money in that project so in that yeah. scenario you might not be able to take a house in that project because there might be some other lender who is giving you 30 lakhs of rupees extra but that lender is not sub, uh, subventing uh, a scheme in that project so the first thing as far as lender analysis is concerned to do an eligibility calculation basis your income parameters also so there are various ways to do this should go to an my my advice sincere is go to an online platform which has a lot of options available enter your income details and then see what is your eligibility coming at various lenders so at least you have a short list of lenders available okay these are the three lenders who are likely to give me this much loan amount and then see amongst those lenders and the projects which you have chosen where is a match happening oh. because it has to be a match between the lender and the project both if you're going for a subvention scheme so you, you should try to have a 360 degree view of both these parties involved so first thing to do is an eligibility analysis second thing to do is see the service standards of the lender there are a lot of online you know reviews available on each lender so do not be what happens is people blindly go suppose they have a salary account with an x bank their first preference is go to that x bank only might not be the right way to do it they might have a different service standard towards a liabilities customer and an assets customer so they might be you know giving you super uh, super kind of facilities since you have a bank account and you have money lying over there when they extend a loan to you they might their service standards might differ so people must look at the service standards of the lender the third thing is there are a lot of hidden costs while you're while you're taking a loan so just don't go blindly by the rate of interest should look at what are the costs involved at this particular lender for example a state bank of india might do a compulsory registered mortgage on each property they fund and the other banks might do an equitable mortgage it this alone creates a 0.3 percent differential on the cost of loan for you which is say 30,000 bucks on a one crore loan so there are certain nuances which you know people should look uh, on the hidden cost side fourth uh, I feel that you know uh, while interacting with a, with a choice of lender should understand how well is the customer engagement model of the lender because okay. This is a long-term thing. You should understand it's a people's thing. So you have to understand who are the people who are going to manage your loan relationship with the bank and try to choose the right people. I think these are the four top lender analysis points which people should look at. Great. That really helps, I think. Let's go to the questions. Sure. We have a lot of questions uh, coming in. Sure, We've sure. got Mahesh from Hyderabad who says, I want to ask, uh, I, I want to go for a uh, subvention scheme, construction link and down payment. Which one is recommended? Oh, uh, uh, Mahesh is asking between a subvention scheme, a construction link scheme and a down payment plan, which one is recommended in t for an investor? 
Uh, I will but say you should go. You should if if he's an investor, he's a pure investor. Yeah. Then yeah. he should go for a down payment scheme only if he has done his project and developer analysis well, because it is a right. call he's taking. So what happens with down payment is the investor is looking at return on investment largely, and right. he's also willing to take some more risk than an end user. Right. So in a down payment scenario, you might get a twenty percent markdown on the property. Which might make a lot of difference to your ultimate return on investment, right? So from an except investor that projects tend to get de delayed these days, Vineet. And if you make your down payment, you're more or less stuck with the project, uh, and uh, you know you've paid in advance, and you uh, the project gets delayed. So you are taking the uh, brunt yes. of the. So see, I'm what I was trying to say is that it depends on what sort of. Investor mindset the customer the guy has Mahesh has okay if yeah. Mahesh has uh, as an investor mindset okay I'm willing to take this risk of project delay and I'm going to factor in that and negotiate a price which is going to be 25 percent less than the best price what the developer is offering me right so uh, uh, as an investor uh, try and maximize the um, uh, benefit to you so that your return yes. on investment becomes the best yes. right. Uh, we could adjust adjust in Kumar who says, how can we sell a property which has been bought under the subvention scheme? Right. So, so it, that's a tricky one. I think that it is it is unlikely that the developer will allow you to sell the property to someone else in the time duration when the subvention scheme is going on because he's already paid interest on it, right? So that will be an yes. individual individual. Negotiation on the table where the developer will say, "Okay, I am going to buy back this from you, but I am not going to give you the market price of today's date. I might mark it down by 25 to 30 percent, right?" Okay. So, right. people who are, you know, wanting to buy in a jiffy, I don't think subvention scheme is the right thing for them because they have to hold on because they have to hold on till the property's value gets realized and the possession of the property comes largely. Right. So consumers, if you're buying a property under a subvention scheme, you have to hold it till possession. Uh, only then will you be uh, uh, will it be easy to sell that property. Otherwise, yes. you may yes. have to mark up the property yes. value. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, there is Shiva from Noida who says, "I want to invest, but I'm confused whether to invest in Noida Extension or Yamuna Expressway. Is invention investment through subvention plan the best option for investment?" Uh, see, I feel that you know people should not get driven by. by I'll take an example. You see, if potatoes are getting sold twenty rupees a kg on three sabjiwalas. And the fourth guy says, hey, "This is twelve rupees a kg." So what does it strike? It strikes that either this fourth sabjiwala is the smartest guy in the world, or the most foolish guy in the world, or there's something, some problem in the potatoes. Because if everything is selling at twenty bucks and somebody sells at twelve bucks, it suddenly, you know, gives a khatra ki ghanti in my mind that, "Yeah, what is happening? Is the potato okay or is it rotten?" So I feel that you should always compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. So if right. we are comparing between Noida Expressway and uh, Noida Extension and Yamuna Expressway, Noida Extension and Yamuna Expressway, uh, you should look at if you are if you are saying subvention scheme is driving your decision, look at two projects, one here and one there. Both of them should be running a subvention scheme. And then see what is the better choice for you. And largely, you are taking a decision for your life. All right. So better stick to a place which is going to, you know, make your life better in the future. Right. When when Actually, I take a property, right? Yeah. Uh, please go ahead. You were saying something. I'm saying that you know, not only driven by a subvention scheme or a pricing kind of factor, you should be more concerned about what is your quality of life going to be. In the future, that place, right? I have either absolutely, two absolutely. Right? Consumers, when you're buying property, you must always consider that buying a property is a decision about property. After that, you see which one gives you the best returns, which one allows you to buy the easiest. But if if property buying is your uh, is your aim, then look at which property gives you best long term returns. After that, you will see and good lifestyle if you're planning for self use. 
if you're planning to uh, buy it as an investor and you plan to hold it for some time, which property gives you good rental returns while you're holding it for uh, leverage value to go up? So when you buy into an early stage development like the Yamuna Expressway, you will find that you, your holding period is going to be much longer because the project is going to take a long time to develop. Noida extension is closer there, uh, uh, to completion. There are lots of projects which are in uh, mid-stages of construction. You'll get your projects faster, and these are areas that, will, that are going to be livable way before the Yamuna Expressway. These are the considerations that should determine, not just a subvention. After you've chosen your location, please check whether subvention helps you to uh, buy it easier. That's what you're saying, right, Vineet? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you should not decide only basis, price point, subvention, whatever you're saying is absolutely right. You should take a long-term decision with a lot of factors getting considered, right? Yeah. Uh, we've got Neelish from Delhi who wants to know about the subvention scheme and the risks associated with them. Now, uh, you have already spent some time explaining the risk, but if you would quickly uh, explain uh, to Neelish the risks and uh, how, how real they are. One of the things that you mentioned, Vineet, that uh, the risk is very low. That is not true because a lot of developers who have sold their projects on subvention schemes have actually either defaulted on some payments or are uh, delaying projects. Here the risk is the consumers, right? So if you could just go very quickly through the risks associated, that would be nice. Yeah, so, so you are absolutely right. You know, there is always a risk of a project getting delayed, right? But Again, you know, we should compare apples to apples. So what I was trying to say is that if a developer is dealing on a project through a subvention scheme and the same developer is not running a subvention scheme and you, you take disbursement and you're paying EMIs, all right? right. The right. Same, same developer can default on the same project in both the scenarios. You're far more protected in the scenario in which a subvention scheme is running. Because exactly. you're a more firmer ground, a very solid footing, going back to the lender and saying, look boss, you don't come to me and tell me, hey, you got to pay your EMIs or anything like that. And you right. actually help me going back to the developer and pushing him for the project delay not happening and timely completion. So what happens, the power of collective uh, you know, group is always more than an individual. So when you're doing yeah, a the lender will be working with you rather than against you. That's absolutely, what you're saying? Because the, absolutely. Because because the, the, the developer had underwritten the project. The project has been offered as a joint offering by the developer and the lender. I mean it's, it's okay. a it's a joint responsibility kind of a situation. So over here in the second scenario where there's a subvention scheme running, the lender is going to be on your side. So that is what takes care of a lot of worries from my mind if I have bought a, a property which is in subvention. So having said that, uh, the, the question is very pertinent that there could be delays, there could be other things happening. But see, we have to do a risk and benefit analysis. So How just many retail it, consumers do you know who have uh, actually uh, suffered because the developer did not make the payments on time? I see, fortunately, I don't know any of them. Fortunately, I don't know any of them. I've okay. spent 15 years running home loan books for various guys like HSBC and Bajaj FinServ uh, and ICICI also. And uh, a lot of these guys run a lot of builder subvention schemes. Okay, So I have not seen projects getting delayed. The reason for that is projects get delayed because of two problems. One is if there's a regulatory issue from the government side because of which they are not getting you know permissions to do further construction or complete the project. And the second is when they have non-availability of cash flows. So yeah. as far as the first reason is concerned, it could be a reason of delay in any project, whether it's subvention, under construction, or any project, because that is that is a government regulation. Could be could be similar for anybody and everybody. That is where, you know, doing an analysis of the developer's rating in the market helps. So that risk uh, is, is, is a 
there could be a third reason why a project is delayed and that could be that right. the developer took the loan for one project but used right. the money uh, to push another project and right. there right. actually which I've already mentioned, if you see the risk associated, there's a, there's a clause called misuse, where the developer can use the money to fund another project. But the problem is that this can be done by him in a scenario where you are not in a subvention scheme. You've gone to a normal route, you're paying your pre-EMIs or EMIs, and the builder can still do the same thing. In this can scenario, we do it in a subvention scheme? Here we're talking about subventions. Very can it is can a developer do it in a subvention as well? It is, very difficult. it is very difficult to do it in a subvention scheme because in a subvention, I, I'll take an example which is going to explain this. So Vineet uh, buys a property in uh, ABC project in Noida and you know pays the initial 10 lakhs of rupees and, and the property gets transferred to my name. And then the subsequent disbursements are, it's a 17 story building, subsequent disbursements are going to happen as per slabs. So 10 Vineets, 10, 10 customers of this sort have taken a loan from say ICICI bank and the first slab payment has come. If the developer misuses this money to another project, he will not be able to complete the next slab and the payment from the lender will not come. Right. So the so the point is, is in in a subvention scheme since the skin in the game of the lender is also very high the lender wants to ensure that the project gets completed on time and creates an additional level of monitoring to stop the builder from doing misuse of funds that is what I want. Okay. What you're saying is a subvention scheme is safer than just going to a lender on your own because the lender then ensures that the project keeps moving on time because the lender has a uh, stake in that project. The lender wants to see that Absolutely. project moving on time. Absolutely. Right. We've Absolutely. got Lokesh Gal who says, what are the things one needs to keep in mind while participating in a subvention scheme? This is Lokesh Garg. So Lokesh, um, as, I, as I mentioned, that it's very, very important to first of all understand your need. What is your requirement? is subvention a right thing for you uh, or is it is it a possibility that you might go in so, so it's very very in a nutshell you should see what is your income ability what is the way you see your financials growing in the next couple of years so a lot of uh, self employed guys or businessmen in the country keep building projections for themselves over the coming years sales turnover profits I feel that you know salaried guys should also do this. They should see that you know if my salary is forty six thousand right now and I have to spend nineteen thousand a month, that leaves me with twenty seven thousand a month available right now to pay an EMI, and I have a bank balance of six lakhs of rupees available. So you should see what is the you know uh, kind of money available in your account to pay your own contribution and what is the free disposable money available to pay your EMI over a period of time. If you feel that the equation of these things is working better or your liquidity will be better in case you go for a subvention scheme, then only and then only you go for a subvention scheme. Otherwise, if you feel that no, I will be able to manage to pay my EMIs and I will be able to manage my own contribution also right now then the subvention scheme will not make sense for you because of the fact that when there is a subvention scheme running in a project, there might be an X amount of cost inbuilt by the builder in the price offered to you. Because eventually if the builder is paying the interest, he's going to recover the interest from where? At least 50% of the interest will be loaded back to the buyer. So, so I feel that you know it is very, very important to assess your financial condition in present as well as in future coming three to four to five years and then look at that. Second point is, suppose you're not paying rental right now, you live in your own house, then maybe you don't require a subvention scheme, you will be able to afford the pre -EMI or EMI which can be levied and take an upfront discount from the builder and look boss, I am not going for a subvention project. So you don't have to pay any interest on my behalf for the next four years. So why don't you pass on that benefit to me right now and let me have a discount on the property prices. 
Right. So, so if I, there is okay? a subvention scheme running on a project, but you don't really need a subvention, you can actually negotiate with the developer and say, Absolutely. I'm not taking a subvention. So give me this a happens discount very, on so This happens the very, very often. This happens very, very often that a developer has run a subvention scheme. You go to him and look, boss, I don't want a subvention scheme. So I want, I want, uh, you know, I want some other lender to do it. The only hitch over there is that the other chosen lender should be in a position to give money to that particular project. So it should be an approved project with that lender. Or if you are a guy who doesn't have a loan, and then then you're the king. I mean, you're the real king customer. You say, boss, yeah. I don't want any loan shown. I want the price. You you're selling under subvention at six thousand four hundred. I want a price of five thousand bucks, and I'm going to pay my money myself to you. That's it. Right, right. Uh, now we've got Nikhil Yadav from Gurgaon who says, I want to know how can I find out whether a particular subvention scheme is good or bad. What are the things as a buyer I need to consider before going for a subvention scheme project? There are two subvention schemes. How do I uh, uh, compare one with the other? Sure. So you should just visit or you know find out the exact subvention uh, scheme offered by these people on a piece of paper. So you should have an Excel sheet available which says that what is exactly going to happen over the period of next four or five years in that project. And then compare the two Excels because this, this decision has to be data driven. Because you've already done development and you've done all the analysis work which was non-data. Now this should be data driven and you should see which is working out better for you. You should see what is going to be your cash outflow for both the schemes and see which is better for you. So I, largely I feel that it has to be data driven. It has to be compared on an Excel sheet, apple to apple, if which is working out for me. What are the parameters that they should compare? Uh, so they should compare on what the is the initial sheet. amount of uh, so what they should compare what is the initial amount of money needed? When is the yeah. developer wanting me to do a registration is the developer you know giving some special thing like stamp duty free from my side registration free from my side what are the amenities available in both the projects are the amenities absolutely same one is better than the other what are the exact amenity the guy is offering what is the what is the you know uh, schedule of payment once the property nears possession. What happens at the time of possession, they will ask you for clubhouse charges, <coughs> electricity charges. There are a lot of charges which can come to you at the time of possession also. Compare those charges. Agar kahi kisi ek project mein koi hidden cost to nahi hai, koi charge, ex charges explode to nahi hai. So that's what I'm saying. If, if you have everything written on a piece of paper now, at the time of final decision taking stage, these are the parameters you should look at. Right. Now we've got Vinita from Ghaziabad who says, is, is no EMI till possession a safe plan? Now this is across the NCR we see a lot of holding saying no EMI till possession. Is it a safe bet for the investor or is there any drawback or insecurity? Is it only a subvention scheme or is there something else here? So this is a, this is a clear, clear subvention scheme. We should just take care of that fine print with an asterisk, which is TNC right. apply. So before right. choosing any of these schemes, we should go and say, Bhaiya, explain to me. What do you mean by EMI till possession? Ask tough questions. Right. So two and a half years tak, I do not have to pay EMI. What happens if you give it a three and a half years? So that right. twelve month extension period, which is a gray area, give it to me in writing that what will happen. Okay. okay. The safe thing will be to get in writing, ki, bhaiya, if you extend it from two and a half to four years, for that one and a half years also, I am not going to pay any money. Eh? You are going to pay the interest. Then I think right. it actually becomes a safe one. Whatever is promised to you, make sure it is in writing so that you have proof So and you are not victimized later. This is a yes. very important point that Vineet is making. Now yes, there's yes. Darwin who's an NRI who has moved to Noida from Australia two months ago. Uh, He's being offered an 1160 square feet uh, uh, apartment on the 10th floor for rupees 44 lakh in a subvention plan. Is it a good okay. deal? 
Now he wants to know, is this a good deal? Should he go for it? Uh, how would you okay. advise? I'll, I'll seek your help in it. Is it the right price point? Uh, it depends on which, real, which... From a real which, estate uh, perspective. Sec, yeah, no 44 lakh is... From a real estate perspective, for 1160 square feet, 44 lakh, depends on... Uh, Darwin, there are two, three things that you have to do. Uh, let me start first and I'll give it back to Vinit. Yeah, yeah. Go to Magic Bricks. Put your uh, put your property size, the location. You haven't given me a, uh, which uh, sector of Noida you're talking about. You put the size, the price, and the location onto our calculator. It will the calculator will tell you how much that price, uh, what other properties are worth. Uh, there is a app that we have launched called the Home Worth Calculator. Use the calculator to figure out whether this this value is right for this property. If it is, then you uh, think about the subvention scheme, and then Vineet will tell you how to assess a subvention scheme. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying if the price point is right at that place, so a simple thumb rule is that you find out uh, properties in the vicinity which are similar area, similar kind of amenity, similar kind of project, and see what is the price they are selling at. If they are selling at a price which is say 500 rupees per square feet lesser, then this guy who's giving it to you for 44 lakhs of rupees in a subvention scheme, then you should see what. Then you should do a cost-benefit analysis. So, so if if you find that uh, somebody is giving the same apartment to you for 35 lakhs of rupees without a subvention scheme, then you should see if you get the subvention scheme and you save interest for say three years period, when this guy is is not going to charge anything to you. To you, what is the amount of money you will save in those three years period, and what is the utility of that money you have? So it's a simple cost-benefit analysis where you see ki if I go with a subvention scheme, what is the kind of money I am saving over the period of that interest-free period, and if I don't go for subvention scheme, what is the amount of upfront discount I am getting, and then do a cost-benefit analysis. Very simple, apple to apple. Compare the amount of saving less, more, where it is, and then take the decision. Okay. I, uh, though we have a lot more queries that are, need to be addressed, users, we are coming to the last question today because we are running out of time. With the rest of the questions, we'll send to Vineet. We'll be happy if he answers. We'll uh, put it on Magic Bricks so that you can uh, get answers to these. But here is a query that uh, has come, and this is something that many people suffer from. There is Sarvesh from Noida who says, I have booked a flat in subvention scheme in Spirewood sector 103 Dwarka. Uh, subvention scheme will finish in a couple of months. I want to know, I want to sell this property but I'm not able to get good rates. What should I do? The subvention scheme is coming to an end. The project is not uh, uh, selling. What should this person do? Uh, so I feel that you should wait, right? Because uh, the objective of getting into a subvention scheme was that you have enjoyed an interest-free period. So take the possession of the property and then go ahead and sell it or exit the property. Because see, if, if, you, if you consider a potential buyer, what is playing in the buyer's mind? That you, uh, you know, kind of invested a meager amount of 5, 7, 8 lakhs of rupees in the property, enjoyed an interest-free period, and now are looking at a return which might be much higher than what any buyer is willing to pay. Right. So I feel that you know anybody who is buying a property at a higher price point than it was available a few years ago wants to see ki kya tha or kya ho gaya. So what was the initial uh, thing and where has it come? Everybody is looking at a hockey stick growth in life, right? So if the project has actually come up well, then only people will be willing to pay the price at which you want to sell. So if, if the possession of the property is you know five, six, eight months down the line, then you you should certainly wait for some time till the possession happens and then get the good handsome return you want. I, I would tend to agree with Vineet. Right now the property markets have been slow for a prolonged period of time. 
Uh, however, we do see some green shoots. There are some pro uh, problems that are being sorted out. And when you talk about the Dwarka Expressway, just today we've uh, heard that Dwarka Expressway uh, problems may be over. It, uh, the work has been awarded. Wait till, even though when you bought it, you may not have anticipated this kind of delay. Since you've had a prolonged period of interest-free uh, uh, purchase, even if you have to pay for a few months, I would say try and pay it and wait for the best rates. That would make sure that you get the uh, best value out of your property. We have just two minutes left, Vineet. I'll squeeze in one more question because this last, is a... Last question. Okay. I, have a, I have a very important meeting starting in exactly yeah. three this is the, this is the last question. There is uh, why one uh, Vinay Rao says why are very few developers offering uh, subvention schemes? If a developer is offering the scheme, does it mean he has exhausted all other funding options? And this is the last option available. Right. See, uh, the first answer: very few people are offering this because very few people get uh, or qualify the parameters of lenders available who are offering these schemes. Okay because it's a stringent due diligence process which the real estate team or the bank is going to do to pre-qualify these lenders to enable them to offer a subvention scheme A. B, a lot of time uh, the developers are not educated enough to understand and take this route. So it is not that it is the last option available, it is a good option available which gives them two things. One is the propensity to increase their sales of that particular project because a lot of buyers get attracted. Secondly, cheap, cheaper alternative of funds available. At the start of the session I explained that construction finance which a developer raises is at 16%. So subvention funds come to them at 9.5%. There is a 7.5% or 6.5% percent spread, additional spread available to the developer. So they will not look at this as the last option. They will look at this as the first option because it gives them cheaper access to funds. And it also uh, it also kinds of uh, gives them increased uh, access to buyers because they are they have been co-branded. It's like it's like a co-branding done. So if you get a make my trip co-branded card from ICICI Bank, you feel okay, one more brand is associated with ICICI, which is offering me additional benefits. So if you take a Make My Trip co-branded card of ICICI, every time you spend might get you some points on Make My Trip, which you can later use it for foreign trip, right? Similarly, if you if you go for a subvention-led project, you might, it's, it's like a co-branding thing. So what will happen is you will, the developer, developer is using ICICI Bank's brand to sell their product also. So I don't think that you know it is a cheaper source of funds or the la oh, sorry, it is not the last alternative. It is in fact the first alternative, but not everybody will get a chance, right? Because lenders will do their due diligence. That's why. Thank you so much, Vinny. Thank you so much, audience, for joining us. Uh, keep the questions coming. We'll get more experts answering your queries. Uh, over so, to you, Neil. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Jayshree and uh, Vineet, uh, for uh, the insightful presentation. I am really thankful to our guest speakers for conducting this webinar. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all our participants for their support in making the webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on the Magic Bricks by tomorrow. This is Neha Nakpal, the moderator of the session, signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.